Behold, how I play the game that everybody seems to hate, Final Fantasy VII Dirge of Cerebus. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right, but whatever. In this video, I will go over how to get the PC SX2 emulator, my settings, how to up the resolution, how to increase the frame rate, how to use HD textures, and how to inject reshade effects, should you so desire. Remember, I am not claiming this is the best way to play, nor the way you should play. This is simply how I play. Take what you like, disregard what you don't, and also, I do not claim to be the end-all be-all of emulation. There most definitely will be choices and settings that you think are suboptimal, so take it with a grain of salt. If you'd like to support the channel, please like and subscribe and hit the notification button on YouTube. Check out my link tree, potentially join my Patreon, and check out my other social channels. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty then, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to PCSX2.net. Looks like this, grab the latest stable build or the latest nightly build. I use nightly, but it doesn't matter. Both will work for this particular game. Then I'm going to download it and extract it to a location of my choice. The folder should look like this. Now, before you click on it and start playing, you are going to need a BIOS file. I can't tell you where to get that, but just search it, it's not hard. Once you get it, by default, the emulator will be looking in documents, PCSX2 BIOS, and I don't have anything in here, but that's where it will be default set. The reason I don't have anything in here is I have mine set to a custom location. If I go to system settings BIOS, I have mine set to a custom location because I have a bunch of different versions of the emulator and I don't want to have a bunch of repeat BIOS files. So I just point them all to the same place. So either go to documents, PCSX2 BIOS and place it in there or set a custom location inside the emulator. Once you do that, go back to your PCSX2 folder and go down to PCSX2-QT. That's the one you're going to want to launch. Click on that. It's going to launch and you won't see a bunch of games at first. That's fine. Go to system settings game list, place the directory of your game list, click rescan all games, and your games will show up. Click on Dirge of Service. I have a state. Let's load that. And here we are, running around playing my game. Now, before we get playing, there's a few things I want to fix. There are some basic settings that for most games work, but not always, but for most. So let's do those first. I'm going to pause it and go to settings, emulation. I put the normal speed to 110%. That puts me at 66 FPS. The reason I do that, this game has some slow down and at 110% it keeps it at a solid 60 FPS and I can't hear any difference in the audio. My EE cycle rate I'm going to put at 300%. For many games this improves frame rate and improves slowdown but not always. I pretty much always have it checked. Occasionally it'll cause bugs with the game but the vast majority of games this does either nothing or it improves the performance of the game. I enable cheats because I like to play with cheats if I'm doing videos. Enable multi-threads if you have a multi-threaded CPU and I click optimal frame pacing, sync to host refresh rate and use host vsync timing and vertical sync. If I don't have a G-Sync monitor, these won't work if you go at 110%, but I have a G-Sync monitor. If you don't have a G-Sync monitor, use vsync and leave that at 100%. Under graphics, rendering, I put the blending accuracy to maximum. This will uh, emulate the PS2 frame buffer effects most accurately. If your GPU can handle it, put it at maximum. If you have slowdown, scale this back until you have a frame rate that you like. And that's it for your basic settings. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I don't love the controls of this game. They're a little bit wonky. You don't have to remap this in the emulator. The game itself has the ability, press triangle, go to config, R2 over to controller setup, and you can change the controls here. The biggest thing is I changed my L2 and R2 to be the fire and magic button. And I changed my shoulder buttons to be my reload and switch weapons and all that stuff. For reference, you can just see my setup here. And now the game feels and plays pretty good and I can roll around here and let's find some bad guys to shoot to test it out. Feeling good, running pretty good, frame rate's good. Let's go to the next step.
All right, the first thing I'm gonna do is adjust the resolution because the game's native resolution on a modern monitor is not going to look fantastic. So I come over to settings, graphics, rendering, internal resolution. I go all the way to 12X native, which is 8K because my GPU can handle it and super sampling does improve aliasing. Just pick what balance of resolution and frame rate works for you. Oh, looks like I died while that was happening. That's okay, we can reload. And now I have 4K resolution that has super clean lines and I'm loving it. The next thing we're gonna do is I don't love the original aspect ratio and most PS2 games do have built-in widescreen patches on the newest version of PCSX2. It used to be difficult, but now it's so much easier. All you have to do is go to settings, graphics, display, aspect ratio, change it to what you want, fit window screen, and make sure that the widescreen hack is applied because if not, it's going to stretch. And there you go. There is some minor stretching. Some games, the patches are better than others, but obviously adjust to your personal preference. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're gonna do is we are gonna improve the textures. If you look at this right here, that texture is pretty blurry. The ground's pretty blurry. These old school textures don't look great on a modern screen. To get the texture pack, you can go to my gaming resource Bible in my link tree. It'll be in the bottom of the YouTube description. And on my PS2 tab, it's sorted by alphabetical order. You can see Dirge of Cerberus. Click on that link. That's gonna take you to Ivy Rock's site, who is the author of the texture pack. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, if you click get textures at the bottom, download HD, he now requires a $10 cost to get the texture pack. When I first got this, it was for free. Once that's done, go to settings, graphics, texture replacement, and look where under here, search directory, where PCSX2 is telling you it's going to load or dump textures. Now you can change this to whatever you want, but by default, it's going to be in documents. So then you're gonna come over here, documents, PCSX2, textures, and you're gonna see the texture packs in here. When you download the texture pack, it has to be named the serial number of the game. This particular game is SLUS2141. One, nine. Sometimes there'll be a second folder under here within the folder that has the same name. It will not load. So make sure that it says the correct serial number, which you can also check if you don't know the serial number. You can go to settings, game properties, and under serial, you'll see the SLUS number, the serial number of the game. So if you want the textures to load, the folder has to match this particular number. Once that is done, it's very simple. Go to settings, graphics, texture replacement, and click load textures. And there we go. Textures are are slightly sharper and have been replaced by upscaled versions of the originals. Enjoy those saucy textures. <laughs> All right, the next thing we're gonna do is inject reshade for some effects. Go to reshade.me, click download, download reshade, the newest version. You don't need the add-on support. Once that's done, you're gonna launch it and then you're gonna browse and you're gonna go to wherever your PCSX2 executable is and you're gonna install it right here. Click next. Now on this section, you have to pick what renderer you are using for PCSX2 to find out which one you're using. Go to settings, go to graphics and right here I have Vulkan. You can use DirectX or you can also use OpenGL. It doesn't matter. I prefer Vulkan for various reasons. Then I would just click Vulkan and I would hit next. I have already installed Reshade, so I don't need to do this. Once you click next, just check install all effects and then it'll take a few minutes and it will install. Then the next thing we're gonna do, if you want to use depth based effects for lighting, go to Marty's Mods dot com buy on patreon you're gonna go to his patreon it is five dollars to get his effect batch but you can sign up for one month download it and then basically if you want i pay every month because he comes out with updates and i think his work is awesome that will give you access to his discord you're gonna want to go to downloads level one and snag the most recent version of immerse pro for me at the time of recording is 24 12. i'm gonna download that check it to my desktop then what you're going to do is wherever you installed your reshade to your pc SX2 executable, you should see a folder that says reshade shaders. If I extract this Immerse Pro with WinRAR or whatever I'm using, WinZip, inside of that, you are going to see shaders and textures. Just grab the shaders from here and put them in your shaders folder and grab the textures and put them in there as well. And you are all set up. 
move in. We come over here, we launch our game, load my state. You should see this bar up at the top saying that reshade is working. I simply press home to bring up the reshade menu. If it's your first time running it, there'll be a thing that says start tutorial. You can just click skip tutorial. It's really not that big of a deal. The first thing that you're gonna do, if you're gonna use any depth based effects, you wanna search in here for launch pad and enable that first and act at the top. Launch pad has to be at the top if you wanna use any depth based effects. Now for this game, I actually ended up not using any depth based effects because I didn't like the way they looked, but I do wanna show you how to set them up in case you do like the way it looks. The next thing to be able to set up any depth based, ah, it's such a hard word to say, any depth based effects is you have to click on display depth. Now, initially you're probably gonna see something like this. Click on add-ons. This is gonna go to your generic depth finder. Copy or check this box down here that has 3,900 something draw calls. That's usually the right box to check. After you check it, you should see something like this. Now yours will probably look a little bit different because I've done a few adjustments. Under edit global preprocessor definitions, I changed the top option to 4,000 and I press zero for the first one and zero for the third one. This lets me know that the depth buffer is checking the geometry correctly on the left and it's checking the geometry or the depth excuse me correctly on the right darker things are closer lighter things are far away and looks pretty natural looks pretty good to me with that done i go act at the top i turn off display depth if i want to use rtgi lighting i just type in rtgi it should be in there immerse pro rtgi check on that now for this game i don't see much of a difference some games it doesn't do a lot i don't know why but you can use MXAO, which is like a form of ambient occlusion. That will, as you can see here, bring in some lighting based on the screen. The only reason I don't like it is now I can see the geometry in his cape being lit and it distracts from the illusion that the cape is flowing and smooth. So I don't use it. However, I do use DPX, which increases the colors a little bit. I use Meteor NV Sharpen, which is a slight sharpening. And I'll use Vignette to do kind of make this, the sides around the edge a little bit darker. Looks a little more uh, cinematic to me like that. And that's pretty much all I do for this game when it comes to reshade. And that's it. That's my settings for this game. If you want to see more in-depth gameplay footage, I have another video settings showcase where I go over the comparison shots and extended gameplay footage of the first section of the game. So you can see my settings that will be linked down below. Otherwise, remember to share the good news of the gaming gospel and ye shall be blessed. I say these things in the name of me and the Father, Koji with the Son, and Carmack the Holy Ghost. Amen and enjoy the games. Thank mm -hmm. you.